Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now when The Mandalorian first aired, we were treated to the sight of the Imperial Remnant for the first time on screen. And though the designs were a little more grubby stormtrooper than something like a well-armed insurgency, they did set the tone for the show to look a little more gritty and a little more, dare I say, realistic. But there were some absolutely cracking concept designs for what the Remnant could have looked like. And if you're looking at ways of playing Star Wars Legion with something a little bit different, this fella here, he's a 3D print from Skullforge, and you can also pick those up from Shapeways too. So I'll put a couple of links in the description if you want to find out more about these figures. Personally, I just had a blast painting them, but as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Whether you've printed this fella yourself or you've picked one up from Shapeways, first thing to do is to prime him. Now for this I've used the Vallejo Grey Primer. This is much lighter than I was expecting and is actually really nice. It's kind of between Army Painter Uniform Grey and Citadel Grey Sear. It's a nice light grey and I think that's going to be really useful for what I have in mind. Any grey is going to work, you could even prime him in white, but I want a little bit of dinginess in the recesses to stick to that grey. So that's why I've done that instead of white. But since I do want him to be much lighter, I've got a little Praxetti white here and one of my makeup brushes. What I'm going to do is flick lightly. Yeah, you'll see I actually want to leave quite a lot more than I ordinarily would. I'll start on his back here and I'm going to dry brush. Okay, no, that's all right. That's, yeah, that's going to be fine. Quite heavily. And the reason why I'm using a makeup brush here is I want to be able to sort of stipple in some areas to really make sure that I've got a grimy, bitty texture. Uh, it's a little difficult to see on camera anyhow, but this is going to give us essentially a rough finish, uh, which I think is going to work better for what I've got in mind later on with this white armor. I don't want pristine white stormtrooper. I want grubby insurgent. So it's quite heavily go around the whole miniature Anywhere that I need to come back and give it a second pass, I can do, of course. And you'll find sometimes that you do want to let this settle and dry a bit and then come back to do that second coat. After a couple of passes over that white armor, you're going to have something that looks like this. Mostly white, but a little bitty and grimy with a faintly textured surface that's going to come in super handy later on. We're going to move on now and start painting the lower areas of color and work our way up. Now there's two places you could start here, either as skin, or in this case I'm going to start with some of the leather details. For this I'm using black red from Vallejo, and you'll see why in a second, because this is a wonderful, really deep, sort of red leather color. Covers quite well, I am going to need to give it a second coat all the same, but not to worry. I'm going to go around all of the leather equipment that I want to, you know, paint in now. The concept artwork that I'm referencing also features these in leather too, these uh, magazine pouches. So I'm going to paint them in at the same time here. His gloves and his boot on this left leg, I am going to paint a different leather color. But let's just have a bit of fun now. The important thing with this is that we are painting something completely fictional that's also never been seen on screen. So don't feel like you're stuck with any particular color here. See what I mean? That is a lovely color. I'm going to move on now, and instead of painting the skin as I thought I would, you'll probably see I've started sneaking on a little bit on his trousers, and I'm going to use the same color for his shirt sleeves. This is Filthy Cape from the Army Painter. The impression that I get from the concept art is that these guys are wearing uh, parts of the old Imperial Army uniform, which was a quite light gray, uh, but it did seem to have just a tiny fraction of color. Like if you watch The Empire Strikes Back, you see the at pilots in that weird not quite perfectly flat gray. Filthy Cape is a nice, I think this is going to be the right color for that. So I'm going to cover in his trousers with this. And I'm also going to paint in his sleeves, just trying to avoid the armor. Now after a couple of coats to get his uniform all squared away, we are going to go ahead and paint the skin. There's not really a right answer for this, but I am going to stick to the army painter and use here tanned flesh, because I figure if I'm going to paint the guys who are hanging out with the client, you know, it was played by Werner Herzog, uh, I reckon 
Those guys, they see a lot of sun. So tan flesh is going to be a pretty good base coat for that skin tone. As you see, it covers very well, and there's not really very much skin to paint at all. Compared to the rest of them so far, that's going to look quite orange, but as always, we're painting in stages. I'm turning now to Mournfang Brown, and I'm going to paint those other brown leather details. So his gloves, quick coat of this, and same too for his boots. Now in the concept art, this turn back here is painted as part of his trousers, uh, but on this miniature itself, it really looks more like it is part of the boots. So I am going to paint it as part of the boot. Now when it comes to his black equipment, we're going to paint this in two different ways. For all of his hard gear, like his blaster and the rim of his helmet, I'm going to use this Vallejo Black, which is, for lack of a better term, an ordinary black paint. It does cover very well though, as you'll see, and doesn't take long. So any hard gear, paint that in black now. And then for any soft gear, like his pauldron for example, or any equipment that he's carrying you want to be black, I'm going to use a little bit of Black Templar Contrast. Now this I probably ought to be a little more careful with. This I'm using because it has a very faint sort of blue-black finish once it dries. So take your time with this. I think you'll see there is a subtle difference between those two forms of black. I've also used a fine brush to get in and do the eyes and the little mouth grill at that same point because I tend to find it easier to do with contrast just because of the way it flows off the brush. You can normally touch in those eyes and whoosh, it just takes care of it. And when it comes to the shoulder pad, um, I, you know, I've seen gray ones, I've seen red ones. Uh, obviously he's not a sniper or a grenadier or anything of the like. So I'm going to stick to painting him like a unit leader. I have here Griffhound Orange. This is another contrast color. What I'm going to do is paint this over. And this is a really good reason why I've dry brushed it white first, because you get a nice rich color over the top of that. There are as well a couple of tiny little details set in the helmet, which are ordinarily a very slight grayish blue. I think at this sort of scale, you can normally quite safely leave them, but if you don't want to, you can use any old gray that you have. I have here some Space Wolves gray, again sticking to contrast for little areas like this. Let's just dot that in there real carefully. At this point we could go to our cleanup stage if you wanted to, but there are a couple of areas on the concept art which features different colored armor, and I like the scavenged look of that. Particularly for our guys out on the remnant, you know, the outer fringe fellas who are serving under the client rather than with Moff Gideon and all his fancy kit, I think this is going to look pretty good. This is basalt gray I'm using from Vallejo, but any old grey will do the job perfectly well here. And now finally clean up. I've got here a little Vallejo off-white, and I'm going to go around and tidy up the armour anywhere that I've splashed over with some of my base colours. This will look quite a lot lighter than our dry brush white will, but not by so much that it will be super noticeable by the time we're finished. So, cruise around now, fix up any little blips and blops, as well as tidying up, painting in some of the areas with off-white gives you an opportunity to add a little bit more texture to the armor. You'll see in some areas there are actually scuffs and little dings sort of modeled into it, which you can paint around and leave gray to really accentuate them at this step. What I've got here, I doesn't really have a name. <laughs> I always call it the Marine Juice. This comes from the Forge World Army painting team, and it is an equal mix of Lamy and Medium, Non oil and Reichland flesh shade, which gives us a fairly soft but quite dark shade. It's a little bit red and it's going to be perfect. Uh, I use this for all sorts of stuff where I don't want a finish quite as dark as what Agrax Earthshade would give me. So once I've shaken that up good and proper, it's time to start applying this. Oh my goodness, all over <laughs> our trooper. Now, at first, this is going to look very dark going on, but don't worry too much. The medium is going to help this settle in such a way that it doesn't darken the colors as much as it looks like now. Any big pools like this though, make sure that you do shift them around a little bit. A uh, common question is what to do about pooling, and the short answer is don't let it pool. So making sure that you've worked it into the recesses, but shift away from any flat areas. 
Let's go around now, cover our whole trooper, and then leave this for about 30 to 40 minutes to dry. And then once that shade has dried, you're going to have something that looks like this. And I'm actually, I'm more pleased with that than I thought I was going to be. I thought there was going to be a lot more work to do. I really like how that's turned out. Proper grimy, but without making him look really dark and, and dingy. So that's quite cool. That medium in the shade really helps with that. For some highlights though, I'm going to move on to Stone Golem from the Army Painter. This is a really nice one for highlighting, well, our filthy cape from earlier. Just a little bit of this in a few places where you want to accentuate the folds in his clothing. Now we'll move on to highlighting his skin with some Cadian flesh tone. Again, one of those ones where it's up to you where you want to take this. I tend to think that tanned flesh shaded and then Cadian flesh tone will give you a pretty good sort of generic Caucasian skin tone. We're going to leave just a little bit of our shaded color in the recesses to give that arm some definition. When it comes to highlighting our red leather, I have here a little bit of Night Quest or Flesh. And this is a really good one for just very extreme edges. Ding! On our lighter, uh, sorry, our darker leather color. Try not to go overboard with this because if you sort of over highlight with this very quickly, it's going to look like he's, well, wearing human skin leather, which we don't necessarily want. And then highlighting the other leather color, I have here Scrag Brown. Now, this is quite an orangey one, so you want to be fairly sparing with it. I'm going to go just for the back of Knuckles and a tiny wee bit on his boots. Now past this point, everything else is really optional, but I think it's going to look cool. So I will do it and let's get to it. I'm going to to some white scar, so proper pure white. And what I'm going to do is pick out just a few areas where I really want these edges on the armor to actually look like they're catching the light. So let's do a few little bits just up at corners on the chest piece here. This is always a really good place to make this look a little sharper. And you'll see over our shade, we get a nice bright white finish, but only where we want to apply it. So have some fun. If you do want to highlight this dude, go around and pick out some really sharp edges. And we're returning to that idea of texture on the armor. So I've done a little bit more highlighting there than I would ordinarily, but used it to sort of grime things up a little and make some parts of the armor, particularly up on the top of the helmet, look that little bit more dinged around. What I've got is gone back to basalt gray and I've got one of my scrubby little dry brushes here. I'm going to very lightly flick along the edges of the blaster fins here because honestly, you don't need a huge amount of color on these. I've mixed together now a tiny little dot of brown sand from Vallejo and just a huge amount of water. What I'm going to do is start just lightly dabbing this into some areas and over some things like the leather and what have you, where I want it to look like a little bit of dust has collected. So on his boots is always a good spot for this. Particularly concentrate in any creases and what have you. Try not to throw too much onto his clothing because that would naturally sort of hide some of what we're doing here. But up on his chest, his armor in particular, let's get that in shot. This is always a good spot to muck that up. And I would suggest here, it's always easier to have too much water in your paint and have it not quite settle right than it is to not have enough water and just paint things brown. So this is one which requires, I'd say, a little bit of practice. But once you've got your eye in with it, uh, you can really get some cool weathering effects very quickly with it. Particularly up around the helmet and other big smooth areas, if you're worried about how much you're leaving behind, just scrub it around with your thumb a little and you'll actually sort of grind it into the paint. It will look a little more realistic that way. Now that won't take quite as long to dry as a shade ordinarily will, but you'll see it's a very subtle grimy effect which you can control where it's applied. I quite like how it looks. Some folks don't really, they're not into it, that's fair enough. But I want a dirty, dusty Stormtrooper because 
Brown sand that we've just used for that dust effect is more or less the base. This is the Vallejo earth texture called brown earth. So this works exactly the same as um, any other you know, texture product. All you're going to do is just apply that to the base. It doesn't have to be a terribly thick layer, but you'll see it holds its shape quite well. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop this down as the dirt on our trooper's base, first of all. Now I tend to find that that Vallejo stuff has got a little more structure to it. It's probably the best way to explain it than something like Armageddon dust, for example. So you do need to make sure that you leave it for plenty of time to dry. I've got now some dark sand and I'm going to very lightly just pass over a few times and dry brush it. Bring out that detail on the top. Now you could go ahead, you could, um, you know, once it's dry, you could hit it with a shade and then dry brush over the top of that. But I don't really think that that's necessary. What you've got is an extremely quick and quite effective basing material here. And all it takes is a little bit of dry brushing. What I'm going to do is once I've got most of my dark sand off of my brush, I'm going to very lightly just jab at his shins, you know, his boots and his shins and go up a little to make his gear look dusty too. And once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a matte varnish spray. I am going to use the Vallejo stuff I usually do. And I'll just paint the base rim using some XV88. Once all that's done, he'll be ready to rock and roll. Let's go look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Imperial Remnant Trooper is complete. And as far as a way of putting essentially proxy figures on the table to play a different era in Star Wars Legion, this is so cool. I really enjoyed painting this dude. So thoroughly recommend going and checking out the art of the Mandalorian if you want to see more of the behind the scenes stuff that went into the Remnant. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me go out and do cool stuff like this. And I do not know quite why this is screaming today. Goodness me. Anyhow. Yeah, there's my pen. Anyhow. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the old box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.